second. And uh, look, our next guest, <laughs> I think Perth is just getting it. She's actually jamming up about, it's um, Christina Olsen and Peter Graham. <laughs> I think she might be coming in. Um, Peter, as we know, is Perth's favourite botticellist. He's a botanist and a cellist. And um, it's really lovely to see them back on stage. It's been a while since we've seen them perform here at Fairbridge. I'm just going to quickly... entrepreneurial, all-round great guy, does good things all over the place. And he sent me a quick letter saying, I want to bring this down to Australia, can you help? <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay, that's a cassette tape, what do I need to do? Okay, I'll pop it in. And I was actually on the Fremantle traffic bridge when I first heard Christina, and I almost caused an accident. <laughs> I was like, oh, Andrew knows what he's talking about, she's great. Um, one thing led to another, and about 18 months later, I found myself at Perth Airport meeting her to come to her first beverage. And that was 20 years ago. And then, isn't it just fantastic that she found her musical companion, our very own Peter Graham, Western Australia <laughs> Peter Graham, and they've had such a successful career touring uh, out in the world playing music. So, please. A warm welcome back to Fairbridge to the chapel for Christina and Peter. Thank you so much. We're going to start with a, a blues tune by one of the blind guys, and I can't remember which blind, it's really bad of me to forget. But, uh, it's, uh, a lot of the blues, uh, <laughs> a lot of blues is gospel or vice versa. And I know one of the great blues players said that he was. Uh, Blues is, gospel is just blues cleaned up so the Lord doesn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so the chorus comes around quite a bit. Please join us in it. Thank you. 
raised without religion. Um, I, I grew up in Haight Ashbury in the 60s. When, uh, well, my mom was a hippie and my dad was a scientist, so we didn't have religion because it wasn't allowed, actually. <laughs> It was funny because it was okay not having religion. You didn't have to go to church on Sunday. You could do other things that you wanted to do. That was all right with me. And, uh, but every now and then if something went wrong, you had no one to pray to. I, like my friends at school had gods they could pray to and get stuff. And that was kind of cool, I guess. <laughs> we did not have that in my household. My dad was, you know, lived in his head pretty much. He'd <laughs> come in and he'd be at the table looking at you like, who are these people in my house? <laughs> I remember when, when tampons were new technology, it was back, way back then, and uh, they had these great advertising campaigns about how you could have a horse and a, go swimming and stuff. You could ride a horse and go swimming with a tampon, and we had no such thing. We lived in the ghetto at the time, and uh, so <laughs> I was intrigued, and I was just about, you know, that early age where sex was so interesting, and all that was so interesting, and I got a box of tampons, and I was like, I'm going to try this out. And it might have worked. It might have worked if I had my period, I didn't. That thing got so stuck. <laughs> I became very religious that night and came uh, <laughs> to a lot of things I didn't know <laughs> I made up, you know. Promised behavior changes if the deities at large would take the tampon out and all that. <laughs> Eventually it came loose. I think I forgot all my promises, but my brother did a similarly stupid thing at a similar age, thank God not with a tampon. He was intrigued with shaving. He'd see my dad shaving every day. It was so masculine, so grown up, so adult. He was so intrigued, and he didn't have any facial hair to speak of, but he did have eyebrows. Whoop, whoop, they came out. <laughs> then he realized he looked retarded, you know, my brother. Oops. And so he got big hunks of head hair and cut them off and got some white glue. <laughs> Glued these bushels of head hair with his eyebrows. Were. He came down to dinner as if that was normal. We hurt ourselves laughing. <laughs> tired of our dumb requests and like why don't we just take care of things so this is an odd little song called prayer flags what if we hung the prayer flags to tell the gods we find what if we call up to the gods Hey, take the weekend off, maybe. What if we said we're sorry that the Who had the flag? 
What if we said, we know you're there, but don't know how we know. What if we said, you have our trust, we don't need for you. Everywhere, everywhere, there's a verse, there's a chorus, you'll pick it up in no time. Let's do it. 